Graham Jason Matthews here with WrestleRant.com. Special guest here today. We're talking to Caleb Conley, head of the upcoming JCW programming, airing every single Wednesday night on YouTube. Part of an eight-episode run, live events coming up next month as well. A lot of exciting stuff going on right now with Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Caleb, you're a big part of it. What's going on, dude? Thanks for taking the time. Yes, sir, man. I'm I'm loving it. JCW is running my life right now. I'm all over the place. I'm promoting stuff, defending this uh american championship everywhere i go it's just it's been a good time well talk about jcw talk about uh, juggalo championship wrestling how would you describe it in a nutshell for those that are unfamiliar with them and if you take all of the craziness of a, of a gcw or old school feel of an ecw and then add in a rock concert and uh a halloween costume contest all together rolled into one that's what you're gonna get it's a party from top to bottom is the timing like in on purpose with this coming up obviously the live event tour kind of culminating around late october right around halloween time i have to imagine that was on purpose or was that just purely coincidental that this is all kind of coinciding around the fall halloween time of kind of going off of what you just said i mean it's not a coincidence icp does a annual halloween show every year for the past or getting us to the 31st annual one so they always try to do a little tour but like they're really uh ramping up on jcw really taking it seriously i mean obviously the company has been in existence since the late 90s early mm -hmm. 2000s but you know with them being touring rock stars and it's hard to take the time to really make it a thing but violent j is like really really intensely wanting to make jcw one of the the biggest companies in america right now and obviously you've been all over the place we've seen you in AEW before tna nwa among a variety of places i've been familiar with your work on the northeast independent scene the last decade plus doing northeast wrestling I mean, you've been all over the place you're yeah. very accomplished yeah. what about jcw kind of drew you to them and appealed you to join uh, uh jcw uh i mean I think, I think a lot of people, I mean, maybe not, but for me, I've always, you know, when you do these independent shows, every once in a while, you'll come across a show that's at a bar. You'll come across a show that's at, like, a brewery. And if it feels like the fans are more intense. They're, you know, they might have a couple of drinks in them. They're lively. They want to really chant. They really want to be a part of it. And that's what the JCW show is every single night. It's it's just craziness. It's if you if you love fan interaction, if you love a good baby face or a good heel, and you want something to cheer and you want something to boo and you want to be loud, JCW is the place for you. I think the only maybe I don't know how many exactly, but I know the one show that I've been to, not JCW specifically, but like in a bar environment. I don't know if it was a promotion or just one of those wrestling shows that. It was a best trivia ever. I, I think you were involved. In I was there. I was the, there, yes. You were on the card, the uh, Connecticut show Milford, like almost exactly three years ago. So this yep. is something, was that pre-JCW for you? Like how long have you been involved with JCW? Uh, well, honestly, uh, I did a JCW, a gathering of the Juggalos in 2010 and then wow. again in 2012. Uh, but those were just kind of one-offs. The clowns didn't know who I was at all. I just happened to know somebody who knew somebody that got me on the show. Um, so I knew what I was expecting. Honestly, I, I've been, uh, you know, keeping up with ICP and JCW since high school before I was even in professional wrestling. So I knew what I was getting myself into. It was kind of something I always wanted to be a part of. It definitely has that feel of old school ECW, but just even crazier than that. And I was always, you know, when I was real little back in like, when I was like 10, when I got into ECW, you know, I'd sneak it. I, my mom didn't even want me watching it, but I would sneak it when she was out of the room. And it, it just brought, it gave me that same feeling as what I did when I was 10 years old watching, you know, old Sabu and Rob Van Dam stuff. How was meeting them like having grown up a fan of theirs of the insane clown posse, obviously, you know, mentioning, uh, you know, kind of your obviously own roots in wrestling and kind of bringing those two worlds together, I'm sure is surreal. What was your own expectation and experience meeting uh, the group for the first time, the clowns for the first time? Uh, you know, man, like they're they're just people just like everybody else. Like they've got a character, they've got a persona that they're portrayed in the public. But honestly, like even if you look at any of the other podcasts they do. 
they're just normal dudes who want to be treated like normal dudes. They're not like over the top rock stars. I've worked for an over the top rock star. I'm not going to say any names, but you know, some people are really weird and they want you to treat them a certain way. And they feel like they're above you in the wrestling business and in the music business. But, but ICP is they're down to earth. They want to, they want to talk to you. They want to mess around. They want to joke around. They want you to shoot straight with them. They don't want to be yes band. Yeah. And you know, they don't want to, they don't want to like, they don't want to have a servant. They want to have a friend. They want to have people that genuinely care about JCW and that genuinely want to care for them and, you know, make their product better. And if you, if you're that kind of a person, they're going to give you the world. And not only are they regular dudes, I mean, these are guys that have been involved in wrestling for a long time. You mentioned doing some of their shows in 2010, but even dating that farther than that, I think any fan that is not aware of their, even their own promotion, JCW itself, and some of the shows they've done over the years, I mean, they were involved with WWE, WWF, as far as the late 90s. I mean, these are guys, and you can attest to it, like that get wrestling. So like, how can, from your own experience in working with them, especially in recent years, have you seen like there's a lot of like celebrities, quote unquote, that get involved in wrestling that have do not have the slightest clue what they're doing. And I'm sure you've probably worked with a few over the course of your time in the business. These guys yeah. seem like the exception to that. What can you say to that front? Well, I mean, you're very right. They are the exception to that because before they were even in rap music, they were they were wrestling. I just yeah. I just watched an interview with RVD the other day and he was talking about how when he was training like in 89, 90 or whatever that Violent J was also there at the same spot. And like he would, you know, Hey, I'm on the side, I'm trying to do this rap thing. And you know, it, like they've been around, they put in the work. It's not like they were just, they didn't, it's not like they were rappers who got famous and then WWE decided to put them on TV. Yeah, They were guys that were getting their ass kicked for, you know, 25, $50 on the independence and then still trying to go out in Detroit and make 25, $50 rapping also. So they were just hustling, non-stop all day you know back then but that's the same thing they're doing now it hasn't stopped it hasn't slowed down like they didn't reach a certain point and decide oh we can just you know be cool now like they have to they continue to hustle they, they, every day there's a new idea there's this is going to happen this is going to happen there's new he's violent j is always bouncing new ideas off of people around him mm-hmm. is it like a conscious decision to make it maybe not like oh how can we do things differently you know maybe not that explicitly but like is there the idea there with JCW to make it as different as possible? Because there's so much wrestling out there nowadays too, even with GCW and, you know, like lower level promotions and stuff like that. This is different, but is that the conscious decision to make it different or is it just different by design? Uh, I, it's a little, it's a little of both. I, mm-hmm. I don't think that, I don't think that a, a juggalo wrestling promotion could be anything but different. <laughs> I, I think yeah. that just comes, that just comes with the territory. Uh, I think that, um, we are, are obviously catering to the Juggalos, but at the same time, we want to have a good wrestling show that is uh, available for anybody who wants to watch wrestling. It's, it's not going to be your cookie cutter show that you might see on a Monday or a Friday, and it's not going to be the same thing you see on a Wednesday. And, you know, every other day of the week, you're going to see, see something in wrestling. I mean, there's TV almost every day now at this point. Yeah. And JCW is going to not be like any of those. So if you're looking for an alternative to the alternative, to the alternative, we got you. <laughs> I feel like the brewery setting specifically, it is so vastly different than what you see from any promotion, like even some of the aforementioned promotions I had mentioned. But like, it, it's such a cool environment. And having been to that one show that we had mentioned from like three years ago that you were a part of, it's just, it, it was it was a wild environment. And there were people on that show that I was familiar with and I brought my girlfriend with me and she wasn't really familiar with like a Dan Housen, for example. And he yeah. was a part of that. And that was it was crazy. Like he was on like the bar or whatever, doing a shtick. Like it's nuts. So like for you specifically, again, having done really everything in wrestling, wrestling in all these different venues and high school gyms with Northeast wrestling to now breweries and stuff like that. Talk about like, is it something that you have to get used to or did you feel right at home upon doing it? Personally, I felt right at home, right upon doing it. I mean, I grew up going to concerts as much as possible. I mean, to this day, like if I've got a free weekend, with nothing else to do, I'm going to try to find a concert to go to. Mm-hmm. I, I just I love the atmosphere, the, the, the raw energy, the just the freedom to be able to express yourself any way you want, to be loud, to just go out and do whatever you want to do. To me, that's like the perfect thing for the concert. And it's also, I think it's perfect for wrestling and the fans. Like, I mean, as a professional wrestler, 
you feed off the energy of the fans. If you mm-hmm. go to a show at an armory or, you know, it could be at an arena, there could be 40,000 people. It doesn't matter how many people, but if they're just sitting on their hands or playing on their phone and don't care, and they're not interacting, if they're not chanting, it makes it a little more hard to, you know, go out there and risk your life on yeah. a nightly basis. But if the fans are going crazy, the fans are chanting, they're going nuts, they're jumping up and down, they're having fun. All of a sudden, it makes you want to go harder. It makes you want to, you know, earn what you're getting to whatever they're, whatever energy they're throwing at you. You want to throw mm-hmm. it back at them. What's the best concert that you've been to? The best concert, um, or favorite? Well, I guess it could be the same answer. Um, I just got back from Riot Fest oh, last cool. weekend. Uh, I got to see uh, Beck, War, Public Enemy. Uh, the one of the, the best live concert I've seen in a long, long time is a band called The Hives, who were pretty popular twenty something years ago. Yeah, it sounds familiar. They had a couple yeah. big hits with like they were at the same time as like when the White Stripes and the Strokes and all those bands kind of mm-hmm. came out, kind of garage rocky stuff. But they're back and like they still go so like I was you know. I knew of them. I'd heard a couple songs, but I'd never seen them live, and it wasn't really on my bucket list of things to see. And my buddy that I went with was like, "You've got to see the Hives," and I, I was blown away. So mm-hmm. if you're going to, if the if the Hives are coming to your town, you should go. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. They sound familiar. Maybe I'm I'm sure I've listened to their music before, or they've been around here in the Northeast or something, because that sounds familiar. But you've whether- definitely heard them on commercials or the radio. You'll 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 Google them in a minute. And you'll be like, "Oh, I know like eight of these songs." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure I have because it sounds extremely familiar but i mean you talk about like going to riot fest is there anything from like an experience like that and all the concerts that you've been to obviously and going back to what you mentioned earlier that you take from an experience like that that you can apply to wrestling and you're thinking well this would be cool for like a jcw show or like i can incorporate this into my act or my next match or whatever just because it's a very similar environments but i feel like there is some overlap there where there can be more similarities Oh yeah. Any anytime I go to a concert or a festival or, or anything, I'm constantly looking around, seeing what I like how would this fit into a wrestling environment or you know, how is the lead singer talking to the audience? How would that yeah, how would that look in a professional wrestling sense? So that's my mind is constantly working in that way of like, Oh, I like this stage set. Maybe something like this would look good for the JCW logo on yeah. it. Something like that. There's always something going on in my mind like that. Obviously, there's a lot of notable names already involved in JCW. Matt Cross being another one. He's been around the block for a very long time. Uh, just talking about people, because obviously you've been in the business for a long time, about people that you might want to bring into the fold that you feel like would be a good fit for JCW. Just talking to people like, hey, I'm doing this thing right now, and it's pretty fucking cool. I feel like you might like it or be a good fit for it. Is there anyone that comes to mind? Uh, just thinking about JCW and potential people that could be a part of it. Uh, there, there's a ton of people, man. Uh one of my best friends for a long time, the man scout, Jake Manning, who, who was also awesome on guy. that brewery show. Yeah. I would really like, I mean, he's, he's also the JCW shows that I did like 10, 15 years ago. He was also on those. So I would love to get him in the fold. Uh, my tag team partner, Zane Riley, ever, anybody who's got like a really over the top weird gimmick. And uh, they find themselves not really knowing a place to showcase it. Maybe it's Chikara like, but it's a little too adult for a for a family friendly type of thing. Yeah, JCW is a spot for it. There's a, there's a ton of them. I, I mean, I could go on all day about. I've got a list in my phone right now of like thirty guys that I would like. This guy would work. This guy would work. This guy would work. That's cool. And hopefully, at some point, we get to see them as part of JCW. And as we wind hey, down, man, I love it. Yeah, and no, especially especially Man's guy too. I just feel like he'd be the perfect fucking fit. I mean, he's another guy that's been around a long time. He's like an NEW legend, is Man's guy. Yeah, he, he just he just went into the NEW Hall of Fame. Yes, he did a couple months ago. Yeah, and good for yeah. him on that. I feel like him in, in JCW would be a riot. Um, but as we wind down here, just talking about for JCW's future and your own future as part of JCW, the big plan for 2025, I know we're talking like the live event tour leading up to the Halloween event, the Hollow Wicked event that you mentioned, uh, but going into 2025 and kind of getting more eyes on the product and, and getting more people buzzing about uh jcw and lunacy and everything else going on that's jcw uh you're in the in the coming months you're gonna see a lot of crossover uh violent j just did a couple dates with uh two tough tony and gcw you're gonna see more interaction between those two companies mm-hmm. I, I i would like to think that there's going to be a lot of interaction with a lot of the local companies 
on the East Coast, a lot, of, you know, a lot of the companies that would be doing similar type of things, uh, there would be there's going to be some crossover there. And then starting in 2025, I don't have the specifics, but they want the JCW's uh, goal is to run a weekly live uh, show leading up to a monthly pay per view. That'd be perfect. That's that, that would you know, be rest- amazing. Yeah, if wrestling fans can have something to look forward to every week because we're like creatures of habit, I feel like that'd Absolutely. be perfect. And especially in like cool venues and stuff like that, I feel like that'd be uh, definitely ideal for 2025. So we'll say there's a lot going on right now with JCW and obviously your own involvement as well. Where can people find you, Caleb, as far as uh, social media and upcoming dates and stuff like that? Where can people support you? Uh, I am leaving for England right up until the tour starts off. So check out my social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything is at Caleb Conley. Uh, I'll be posting all those. I don't have the list in front of me, but then obviously the, the train of tour train of terror tour, there's nine dates in a row. That's yeah. going to be amazing. All that's, uh, you know, on the JCW Instagram and Twitter, Juggalo championship wrestling, all of those things. Um, yeah, I mean, I just just check out. I'm always posting stuff about JCW and every other date I'm doing. You know, I'm gonna try to vlog as much as I can uh, with this tour of England I'm doing also. So that should be fun. Um, I'm just gearing gearing up for 2025 and the the future for Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Cool, man. Well, best of luck with everything. Congrats on all the success. Like I said, as someone that's been following your career since those early NEW days, it's been uh, awesome to see your evolution through all these various promotions and now JCW. And hopefully I can catch you at the next uh, bar show that you guys do in, in Connecticut, whether it's big time trivia or, or best trivia ever or JCW or whatever it's going to be. All right, man. Watch Lunacy every Wednesday on YouTube. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. I look forward to checking the show. I appreciate the time. All right. Thanks, man.